everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. I'm Carmen, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and I'll list the other things right here. And I say it's a knitting podcast and crochet, but um, I have some crochet to show. I have about this much knitting to show, <laughs> literally this much. Um, and the rest is all non-knitting and crochet. I have spinning, I have yarn dyeing, I have painting, I have bath bombs, and coloring. Um, and I think that's it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I was preparing my things. I have them all laid out here for this week's episode. And I, I was like, where's my knitting? But I, I haven't been knitting, really. Just this small thing laying in front of me, which is a swatch. Um, I just haven't been knitting. I have been working on a crochet project, actually, that has really been hurting my wrist. <laughs> Uh, every time I would uh, finish a row, my wrist would just hurt, and um, I figured I would stop um, crocheting on that project, and then um, I didn't pick up any knitting either, so yeah. <laughs> and that also had to do with the fact that spinning suddenly became very addictive for me. Um, and I'll just start with that because I have finished my spinning project that I was showing you last time. So last time I had three bobbins of singles. So uh, single ply, yeah, single ply yarns. Well, not ply. How do you say this? Anyway, three bobbins of yarn and I plied them together and then split them in half because I want to have... Um, I want to make socks with these, so I split the yarn in equal parts. And this is the yarn. It is a three ply. And I just love all of the colors. You can only see a bit right now, but um, there are so many colors in here. There's some darker purple, lots of pinks, lots of orange. Uh, some white spots too, some pastel. This is the other ball. And this is a blend of merino and nylon, so I can make socks with it. Pretty, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm really, really happy that I finished this. So uh, I spun the yarn on three different bobbins so I could have three threads going into one yarn um, because for knitting hand-spun socks, you ideally want a three-ply. And don't ask me why. I know this from Amy from uh, Stranded, Stranded Dye Works podcast. And... Um, I think it's stronger than a two-ply, and usually I use a four-ply for socks, but I don't know if I could manage four-ply hand-spun and have it be thin enough for socks, because um, I do think I managed to get a thinner yarn than last time, so my yellow hand-spun socks, uh, which I showed last time, that yarn uh, turned out like a sport weight or a DK weight, um, which, you know, worked out totally fine, but uh, usually I knit fingering weight socks. Um, and this one looks to be a bit thinner, so we will see. I think I will still use the 2.5 millimeter needle for this. But uh, yeah, I'm excited actually to cast this on. So I think I might wait a little while longer just to give my wrist some extra rest. Um, but yeah, this will be my first knitting project after that. So 
very, very excited. If you're on Instagram, I have a really fun reel where I showed the process of this spinning um, project. So um, have a look at that if you're on Instagram. Um, and I'm just going to show you my next spinning project because it flows nicely um, to this. So this is actually a bit of a fail. I'm just going to say that up front. So I ordered this spinning yarn. It's from a Dutch mill. And uh, this was my own request. So this is a blend of Shetland wool, uh, which was from their own sheep, I think and mohair because they had uh, their own mohair too and you know I'm all about local stuff uh, so I asked them to um, to blend 200 grams of Shetland wool and 100 grams of mohair and blend that together I thought the mohair would give a really nice fluffy touch uh, and make it stronger and I think I thought if I spin it really finely which you can with mohair because it's really strong as well. Um, and then have a two-ply, like a fluffy two-ply, and then I could dye it. And then um, I could perhaps make a shawl or a sweater or whatever. Um, <laughs> but it hasn't turned out the way that I hoped it to. So, um, first of all, it was really, really difficult to spin with. Um, the thread kept breaking um, and it was just very frustrating um, so after I had spun on this for two evenings on the third day I thought okay well let's just ply what I have right now and see what it actually produces what kind of yarn and I knit this swatch with it and <laughs> Um, the yarn, it actually, it looks really nice. The, the texture is really nice. And this is, this is garter stitch. Um, but yeah, it just, it look it just looks really nice. It has a nice halo. Um, but it is very, very scratchy. Like... You know that people always think that wool is scratchy and like, oh, woolly sweaters must be so itchy. Um, when I envision those kind of sweaters, this <laughs> this is what I imagine. Um, if you know that episode of SpongeBob where SpongeBob makes a sweater for uh, Octo, no, <laughs> Octo is the Dutch name, Squidward. Weird word. Um, I don't even know what I was doing. So when when SpongeBob makes a sweater for Squidward out of his out of his eyelashes, I imagine that it must be as itchy as this because this just it just is really really itchy. So so I'm wondering what to do with it. Um, I mean, I have 300 grams of this now, which is quite a lot. Uh, this is just. 80 grams maybe 90 grams because I had split this into a 100 gram uh, thing um, no 50 grams this is just 50 grams oh god I have a lot of this uh, fiber um, so I thought uh, perhaps if I blend it with another yarn that I have uh, another bit of roving I have some uh, beige sandy colored camel roving which is very, very soft. So I'm just going to try and like take take a little bit of this and take a little bit of the other roving and then just, you know, I don't have a carding machine or carding um, brushes. Um, so I'm just going to do that like this and kind of uh, try to blend them in that way. And if that works, and if it produces a nicer yarn, then I might uh, continue with that. Because, um, yeah, I am in the mood for spinning and I want to do some more. And also, the Tour de Fleece has started. So if you don't know, um, the Tour de Fleece 
starts at the same day as the Tour de France. Uh, and yeah, because uh, spinning yarn, you know, you um, travel. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like biking actually. So I don't care about the Tour de France at all, but. Um, I do like a tour de fleece and I like that it gives some extra motivation. I see a lot of spinning content on my on my social media and uh, yeah, it just motivates me. So <laughs> this was attempt number one. I am going to try out this, uh, this fiber blended with the camel and perhaps also some merino that I have and I'm going to make some uh, tests. So um, I will report back in two weeks on my next podcast episode. <laughs> but yes, this is the only bit of knitting that I did. The only bit of knitting. So yay. Kudos for me for actually sticking with it because usually when I say that I'm going to give my wrist some rest, I don't actually do it. Then on to the next project, and I think I'm going to show you the dyeing project next, uh, which is something that I'm really excited about. Um, I have been following Sonia Tara, who is Sonia Tara one on Instagram. I'll put it down here because um, if I pronounce Sonia. Uh, English speakers will think it's with a Y while it's with a J. Um, she has uh, Atelier Sun Sen and she does wild ink recipes, which has been really interesting. And she had a recipe for poppy dye. And I made a batch. Look at the color! <laughs> I am stupidly excited about this. Um, and I'm going to show you what I did with it. So first, I took a jam jar, much bigger than this one, well, like twice as big as this one, and uh, there are a lot of poppies around here, and um, what you do is you pick the petals, but I would advise to only pick them when they're on the ground because, you know, they only bloom for a day, so let them have their day. Okay. So I only I only took the ones that were that were already fallen off, and I filled a big jam jar. And uh, Sonia um, says in her recipe to just like fill it with water and leave it out in the sun. And uh, back then, back then, two weeks ago, it was really 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 sunny. So I could leave it outside, you know, with the with the lid on, uh, kind of as a solar dye. So. If you're familiar with dyeing, you know that you can dye, uh, you leave the dye stuff in your dye pot uh, with water and you heat it. Um, you can do that or you can leave it outside if it's really, really sunny and will kind of have the same effect. But, um, you know, you don't need any gas for that, so it's uh, more eco-friendly. Anyway, so I did that. I left it outside for like two or three days um, and then I had some more fresh uh, poppy leaves, uh, poppy petals, and I thought, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to boil it now. So I opened the jar <laughs> and it stank. <laughs> like, <laughs> it smelled so bad, so bad that I wish I could have cooked it outside. It, it smelled really, really bad. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it's fermenting, so that just releases some kind of smells. So uh, you don't have to do solar dyeing. I just did that with the petals until I had enough petals so I could uh, process it in the dye pod. But what you do is you just leave it on the dye uh, leave it on the stove and uh, don't let it boil because um, if you get past the boiling point or at the boiling point it will kind of uh, take the saturation out of your color um, so it's much much brighter if you keep it below the boiling point uh, so just let it simmer and uh, then you can strain out the petals and then uh, simmer it some more so that it thickens down into like a paint but before I uh, I don't know what the verb is. Before I uh, wanted to simmer it down to just 
a uh, liquid. Um, I tried some yarn dyeing and in the dye pot it looked vibrant, vibrant red. Um, and then when I squeezed out the moisture it became a little bit pale. But uh, still it is a very, very pretty pink. So I dyed some small skeins. This is just a uh, color swatch skein that will go onto my rainbow of natural dyes. And this is, I don't know how many grams this was, uh, probably 20 or 30. Um, and I thought I could use this as a nice accent in one of my knitting projects. And I just really, really like it. It's a beautiful pale pink and um, it's kind of the color that you want from avocado, but that I can never get. <laughs> yeah, avocado, I, I don't have a lot of success with avocado dye. Um, I do get this color with cochineal. Um, yeah, but it's just really nice to get that with just a jar of poppy petals. I thought, I thought it was just very, very interesting. And then what I also did, so besides yarn dyeing, I also painted a little bit with this. And <laughs> it's just very small card. And I painted another card which has already been snatched by my boyfriend. So um, yeah, I made this. <laughs> I really, really like it. So I, I took a uh, paintbrush and this poppy dye and I just painted some splotches on here and then I let it dry for a day and then I took my black pen and made them look like poppies. <laughs> So it has come full circle. The poppies became dye, which again became poppies. Yay! <laughs> Actually, one of my um, painting classes as a kid, uh, when we went camping in France, um, they had uh, painting workshops there. And I, I was always a creative kid. And my mom and my aunts, they were all, all very, very creative. Um, so so I uh, I convinced my mom to to let me do a paint workshop. It was in French, but uh, I could manage, and um, I wanted to paint coquelicot, which is uh, how they say poppies in French, coquelicot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm really really pleased with this, and I think I might do some more. Yeah, this is just on watercolor paper. Um, yeah, really, really pleased. So yeah, that was another craft project, not knitting or crochet related. And yeah, really, really fun. And now I'm moving on to another craft project, which has absolutely no connection to knitting or crochet, uh, which is the bath bombs. <laughs> They are wrapped in um, fabric napkins because I don't want them to crumble apart. Um, and this kind of ties in nicely with the flower petal harvesting because I also use some flower petals in here. Um, and I think I'm going to show you the first batch that I made first which was with lavender and some other flower petals. <laughs> Trying to hold them all. They look really, really good. And they look like you could eat them, but you can't. So, ta-da! Don't they look fun? I think this is just so exciting. So um, I followed this recipe of um, you need baking soda, citric acid, and cornstarch. Um, 
I don't know if cornstarch is the actual name. We call it maizena in Dutch. Um, but mice is corn, so perhaps it is cornstarch. Um, and I used some food coloring and a cupcake baking tray, and I put in some baking paper in that. Um, these are some petals from Vipers Boo Gloss or Bug Gloss, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, Slangenkeit. Um, yeah, I'll put it on screen. It's a very um, pretty plant with lots and lots of blue flowers. Um, and there is some hollyhock, I think, in here as well, and some lavender. And the colors are all from the food dyes. So, yeah. This was mind-blowing to me, so I made these, left them in the baking tray for at least a day, so they dry out. And then you have bath bombs, and I still need to try them out, because I don't know if they actually work. <laughs> if they actually, you know, sizzle and float, and or just sink to the bottom. Um... Yeah, but that was really, really fun, and I made another batch as well with other colors and other petals, but these, um, oh, you also need to add coconut oil a little bit, um, but I think with these that I did not add enough coconut oil, which is why they are very, very crumbly, so I'm not going to lift them all, <laughs> it's already crumbling, so this one is orange, on top and then yellow on the bottom and there are some more poppy leaves isn't that cute um and i also put some uh jasmine essential oil in these and they smell heavenly um trying to find one with different petals in it there's some hollyhock in here, but yeah, it doesn't look very pretty. Um, yeah, so this was just a lot of fun, and I can't wait to try them out. Um, yeah, and so there was a little bit... <laughs> I gosh, crumbs all over me. So there was a little bit of the, um, you know, a little bit of crumbs left on the cupcake bacon tray. And when I went to rinse that off, it just went like So I think it works. And I'm just really excited. So yeah, I'm hoping for the day when it is cold enough to take a bath. Because I want to take a bath. <laughs> yeah. So those are all of my crafts. I do have some things to show you, but those are all of the things I made. I actually kind of forgot about this project because I had it to the side, uh, but this is also a crochet project. Um, my birthday bunting. So I finished this uh, last time I had crocheted all of the squares, or I, I'm not sure if I finished it. But um, these were all swatches, and I was crocheting fun edges around all of them. And, and uh, yeah, I made a bunting out of them. So I made this, which I just cut from this thrifted um, dress. Um, or maybe it was in the attic. I don't know. It was just a very old dress and I cut strips from it. I ironed it double. Um, I placed the bunting flags inside and then I just sewed from one end all the way to the other end, sewing over the crochet stitches. And that turned out really, really well. It is a little bit wonky in places and here I definitely have to, um, secure that a little bit more because it is just poking out here because the 
the um, strap. This is made out of several strips, so <laughs> I just sewed over the ends, but here I think I have to secure it a little bit more. So yeah, this also turned out really, really nicely. Um, I will also put in some footage of it hanging in my garden. And you can see it on our wooden fence here, and I just thought it was really pretty. And I'm happy that it is uh, yarn and fabric and not paper because it has also been quite rainy the last couple days and um, I could just leave this bunting up, whereas with the paper one I would have to take it down. So yes, this was very nice, um, and I'm not sure whether I said that last time, but the etching that I used, so the first one, these are three rows versus just a granny stripe, then it's, it's, it's five chain stitches with one single crochet, so you get scallops, and then you make cluster stitches in those scallops, and the pattern for this actually comes from a Japanese crochet book, which I thought I had here, but um, I guess I don't. Um, yeah, but it was just really easy. I used the same edging on all of them, except for this one, which I forgot to join to the bunting. <laughs> I just, I finished the bunting and then um, after I finished it, I found this one. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Because here, this this was already quite a big square, uh, so I didn't want to make it any bigger. So I just um, added some scallops here and then some bigger scallops here. Yeah, but it was just nice to do a little bit of mindless crochet. Um, easy pattern and then, you know, and not all of these squares are the same size, so whenever I would like have a stitch short or anything, it would just not matter. I would just fudge it so it would at least look good. And I think the only one that came out a little bit wonky is this one that had a knit swatch as the center. And I think I think I should have uh, spaced the crochet edging out a little bit more because now it's just uh, a little bit wavy. So that means I put in too many crochet stitches so the knitting gets stretched out. Um, yeah, but it's fine. <laughs> I blocked it and it rained, which means it blocked again, technically, and um, it's fine, it's fine. So, so yeah, that was a lot of fun, and I'm happy to have this now because I will be using it for many more years. And then lastly, I have some goodies to show you because I asked for some knitting related goodies for my birthday. And these are two of the things that I got. I was completely spoiled. <laughs> my family, they had so many presents for me. <laughs> and my brother gave me a pushing lamp, which was soft so you can like squish it and then it um, becomes a different color, <laughs> but, um, yeah, these were ones I actually asked for, and I really, really wanted to have these books for a long time, um, because I'm really into stranded color work, and this is, I think it is the book on stranded color work, uh, because it also goes into the history, and it has a lot of color work patterns in there and it just yeah it just explains a lot of the you know 
<laughs> you can tell I haven't read it yet, but um, I've, I've, I've just read ex excerpts from it online and I knew that I wanted to have this book because it explains why some of the um, symbols uh, occur a lot. Uh, so this is Fair Isle um, strand of color work and some people think that Fair Isle is just another word for color work, but it's not. Fair Isle is regional, so it's like uh, how you can have Norwegian strand of color work, uh, you can have Fair Isle, you can have Estonian? No, that's Estonian place. I don't know. I don't know enough about it yet. That's why I have the book. Um, yeah, but it just explains why you see some of the symbols and uh, what they mean and yeah. And um, yeah, just just a lot about the history of strand color work. And then this one is also about strand of color work, but more modern. So I don't think this goes into the history of strand of color work. I don't think. So this is by Felicity. Um, what's her surname? Felicity Ford from Knit Sonic. And what she does is she takes a picture um, and then turns it into knitting. So uh, let me find you an example. There was one with Field of Poppies, and I really like that one. See, so here she has a picture, which was her inspiration, and then this is the color work chart that she made from that. And she kind of guides you through her process and yeah, I just find that really, really inter interesting and inspiring uh, because we knitters we really do see patterns everywhere and um, it's really nice to have a kind of a guideline for how to pro process those. Um, so yes, I have the history and then the modern strand of color work. Um, yeah, because I just, I really want to do more with this. And I would love to actually be able to do actual Fair Isle design. Um, I'm not sure if I could ever do that because I'm not from that region, but um, yeah, I'm just completely intrigued by it and um, I just want to know more. So those were two of the things that I got. And then the last thing <laughs> is was completely unexpected, but look at this. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I love coloring, but I haven't done it in a long while. And my mom thought with this that I could make my charts, my um, color work charts, I would, I could make them more, um, look more like the yarn colors that I'm actually going to use. Because right now I just, you know, I usually just use, um, pencil but I'm really really excited to be able to use these and I use them for a little sketch of my newest design which is a crochet blanket and it was really really fun to use the colors for the first time um, because they have a brush end which you can kind of use for blush blush brush calligraphy and they have a just a hard tip uh, which you can just use for you know fine lines so many colors and so talking about my next design this is the last thing I'm going to show you <laughs> I thought the pens were the last thing thing but um, it's this so I made some swatches and you may have already seen my blog post about this so these are my swatches and you know spoiler alert the blanket is actually already finished uh, because um, you know I want to have everything finished before I actually start posting about it um, I haven't always done that um, I sometimes I also take you in the process uh, for example with my tornado toes socks um, and my no pearl cuff down socks um, but then 
I don't want to disappoint you when the process takes longer than I expected and I can't um, publish the pattern as soon as I want it. So for this one, I've just worked on this, um, I started months ago, uh, last year in fact, and my sampler has already finished the blanket and uh, I'm not going to show you the blanket yet, that will be um, revealed in two weeks I think. Um, but these were the swatches, so I knew that I wanted to do it in Color Crafter, which is a yarn by Scapius. This is Color Crafter, so I used Color Crafter for this uh, swatch, but I knew it wasn't in the colors that I wanted to use. Uh, but still, you know, for stitch gauge I needed to have a swatch with these, um, with this yarn anyway. So this is the first swatch. And then in the second one, I used a different yarn. So this is uh, Scapius Cotton 8 and Katona, I think. So just uh, cotton yarns, but uh, I used them in the colors that I was thinking about using. So um, in the end, I used a couple more blues. I ditched the purple and there is a minty green in there as well. But yeah, this is the gist of the colors and if you can see um so the green one is the most vis visible here so see that the green one is it starts here and then it climbs up a step and then it does two waves climbs up another step and then another two waves do you see that So you kind of work diagonally. Uh, so you start here, this is just two ways, and then the another color, I mean the next color, you do two rows, and then, and then you basically do that until you have the width of the blanket that you want, and then you work up. And then at the end you'll have to fill in the other corner. <laughs> Don't worry, this is not the entire pattern. I will actually write it out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just to give you an idea. And my sampler said it was very addictive to work on this, which is always very good to hear. So I'm very, very excited to be publishing this pattern. So that will be coming in a couple weeks. So be sure to check my uh, website which is newleafdesigns.nl and I don't know if you saw it but I also published a course uh, over the last two weeks so I um, you guys know I have a patreon page where you can access exclusive content and I have a bunch of tutorial videos on there and master classes about color work knitting sweater knitting um, amigurumi crochet there's a lot of tutorials on there, um, but a lot of people don't like that it has a subscription, so there were recurring payments, and I get that. So uh, I wanted to create one of the courses on a separate platform. Um, so the Colorwork course is now also on another website where you can just buy it as a one-off payment and it's not a subscription you just pay once and then it's yours um, including all of the patterns all of the videos for that so that's the color work confidence masterclass I have a separate video on my channel actually I will try to link it in the top <laughs> like the other youtubers do I will try to link it um, so you can uh, see what it's like in the video I'm explaining what kind of techniques we get into. Um, yeah, because I just thought, you know, I have this course, but I know some people can't access it because they don't want a subscription. And then now you can just uh, pay for it as a one-time payment. So yeah, that was exciting. A lot of people signed up for that, which made me really happy. Um, yeah, and I think that is all that I want to chat about today. Um, thank you all so, so much for your comments on my last podcast. Thank you for the birthday wishes. And thank you for asking how my plants are. They are all doing great. Um, I gave them some medicine uh, for the bug infestation that was happening. Um, it seems to have helped, so fingers crossed that, it, that they don't come back. Um, 
so yeah, everything is going really well. So I'm going to take it easy for another two weeks with knitting, but I'm sure I will still have lots to show you uh, for my next podcast episode. So we hope to see you then, and have a great day, and see you next time. Bye-bye!